Hi, I'm Becky from Crafters Companion and I'm here to show you our foundation paper piece pad which we just bought out which has got the, um, all these little designs down here. So each one of these pads will have 24 pieces in there, that's four of each of these six designs. You have a toadstool, a bird, a butterfly, a heart, a birdhouse and also a tulip. Um, in order for you to put those together. It comes with full instructions and you'll have four individual sheets of each of those designs for you to make. So the heart shaped block um, is very simple and it's probably the best one to start off with because you've got two halves um, that are going to be exactly the same, obviously um, a mirror image. Now as we've said before, we've got details over here about how to cut them out, what kind of fabric you need and down here you've got a little cutting chart and everything is labelled um, with A's or B's depending on which piece of pattern um, paper you're going to be using. Now I found the best way for me to do with this was to um, photocopy just this little piece here and as I was cutting out I just gave a little tick um, in order to make sure that I'd got the right pieces of fabric together. Um, I then also marked them with a heat erasable pen just so it's really really clear for me to see what um, letter each piece of fabric related to. Then as you flip over your sort of first piece of um, your pad you'll see you've got your design here. So this, as I said before, this is the first one to start off with because it's nice and simple. So you've got side A and side B, which are exactly the same, they're just mirror images of each other. So this big piece here, this A part, this is going to be the part that's red and then these other parts are going to be the white colour if you're going to be using the same um, patterns as we are. So you'll just need to cut this out um, cut not quite or just about where that little dotted line is around the edge until you've got two paper pieces. So once you've got all your pieces cut together, um, just lay out your paper pieces and uh, keep your fabric pieces um, to one side. So you're going to have a pile that is for A and another pile that's for B. Now we're going to start with piece A. So A1, which is this piece here, um, which is this piece of red fabric and we're going to take A2. So those are the first two pieces of fabric we're going to use. So you're going to take your paper piece and you're going to fold it over and turn it over the other way so you're, you've got the back side to it. Now I'm just going to give this fabric a little quick press because it's become a little bit crumpled. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that our piece of fabric covers over this shape which is the A1 shape and we want it to cover over completely sort of a, a quarter of an inch all the way around the outside. Now because this is quite a big piece of fabric um, I can see that if I just line up these little points here and I line up against that piece of fabric that is a quarter of an inch seam allowance between this line and this edge of my paper anyway. So I can just make sure that fold it back I can see where my lines are and I can make sure that I've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around the outside and around here. Just pull that little bit closer to that point here, a little mark here. Just want to make sure that that's going to completely cover it. So I just move that across like so. And then I'm going to use some pins to pin it together. Now pins are really great for you at this point with a big piece of fabric. When we do some of the demonstrations a little bit later, you'll see that you'll need to use a glue stick um, just to secure the fabric to the paper pattern because the, paper, the pieces are quite small. So if I flip it over now, you'll see we've got that piece of um, paper um, completely covered where with the fabric. So I can just sort of fold these little pieces over slightly so I can see that everything is covered and I've got exactly, well, I've got far more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way through. So then we're going to look at section A2. So this is this piece here and this is where we're going to be putting our white piece of fabric. So we want to join up the red and the white along this line and we're going to actually stitch along this line in a moment. But what we're going to do first of all is we're going to fold the paper pattern on this line here. Now I found the best way is to use a ruler and just lift up a little bit along that line and then I can fold it over like so. So you're just folding along that line between parts A1 and parts A2, like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim this piece of fabric with a quarter of an inch, just along this line. So that's going to give us a quarter of an inch um, seam allowance. 
So I'm using a small rotary cutter and I'm using a fairly small cutting mat because then I can just twist that around nice and easily. I'm using my ruler and it's got a marking um, for a quarter of an inch here. So I'm just going to line that first, the uh, second line up against that fold and then I'm going to cut with my rotary cutter like so. Now I'm going to fold this piece of paper back I'm going to flip it over so it's the wrong way around and then I'm going to place my piece of white fabric along this line. So this is the fabric which is going to form part A2. Now once again I want to make sure that when it's folded out it completely covers the section it needs to cover. So I just might need to move it down slightly like so. So when I sew in a moment along this line on the other side then, I'm, then I'd be able to fold this piece of fabric out and it's going to completely cover that little piece here. So that's what I'm looking for. So I'm making sure I've got a bit of an overhang here. So I've got this little point coming out here. So if I've matched it up th this way against this edge here on the red, when I folded it over, it would be cutting off this little pat section of the pattern, which we obviously don't want. So we're going to put that across like so. And then I'm just going to use another pin to pin that together. So I'm making sure my pins are well aware, well away from my sewing line. So they're all the way down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sewing now and I'm going to sew along this line here, along the line between A1 and A2 and that's going to sew those two pieces of fabric together. So I've changed my stitch length to um, two millimetres and um, I'm using a, a standard needle on this. What you can do is use a, an old needle, so not something that's completely blunt, but something that's fairly blunt. If you're going to be doing a lot of paper piecing, you'll want to use a, the same needle each time so it doesn't um, destroy it going through the um, paper. Um, so if you use a slightly blunt or slightly older needle for this, that's absolutely perfect. So I'm just lining up against the, the point of the, um, the line, the seam between A and um, A1 and A2 and I'm going to sew along the line. So I'm stitching through the paper and I'm also stitching through the fabric, the two layers of fabric beneath. But you can see I've stitched all the way along there and it's effectively perforated this piece of tissue paper. Now once we've put everything together you will then tear the tissue paper off and that's when you'll get your, your full design being shown. So we're going to take out our pins and we're going to leave those, I'm going to leave those red ones in for the moment because they're just going to hold the rest of the pattern together. So now if I flip this piece of white fabric over you can see it's completely covered this little section here which is where A2 is. So we're now going to go where we flip the, the pattern over and we're going to find this line between A2 and A3 and we're going to once again just fold that over. So you can do that with your ruler or you can do it by eye, it's entirely up to do. So I folded that over there. I'm going to then take my fabric. I'm just going to give it a bit of a finger press here. You can give it a bit of an iron if you want to. And then when I fold back my pattern piece again, this is along the line between um, section A, A2 and A3, you'll see my fabric is um, laid out here. And I'm just going to trim that again with my quarter of an inch seam allowance. So we're doing effectively the same thing we've done all the way along. We're just folding and we're just trimming. So we're going to do also cut out this piece of red as well. So we won't need that um, excess piece of red that's hanging over the seam allowance. So lining up my ruler against that fold and then trimming off that excess. So that's how it's looking now. And we're going to do the same thing with the next piece of fabric. The next piece of fabric is A3. So I'm going to grab section A3, which should be this one here. It's this piece here. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Then we take our pins out and then fold this piece over, give that a finger press and you can see how it's beginning to come together. So we're just going to continue in this same way um, until we've, we've finished off the design.
you can see you've got the shape of that first half of the heart. Now if I flip the pattern around this way, you can see we've got lots of the um, fabric which is over the actual pattern. We just need to trim that. So we're just going to trim that actually on the line because that already takes into account our quarter of an inch seam allowance. So there you've got your first half of your heart and you'll do the second half in exactly the same way and you'll just put them right sides together and stitch along this seam here. Um, then you'll, it'll look like this when you've got it finished. So on this side you'll have your paper pieces and um, so all your patterns there. Um, on this side is where you know your finished size, finish, finished side. Um, and then once you're ready you just need to tear off the paper um, it just pulls apart quite easily and you might need to cut it away a few little bit, bits and pieces and sometimes when it's really tiny stitches, sometimes at the points, you may need to use a pair of tweezers just to get rid of those little pieces. So here you have your finished heart shaped block which is being made using your foundation paper pieces. You just need to peel the paper off the rear of it and sew it onto any quilt or any item that you're going to be making. So these all come from the new foundation paper piecing pad from Crafters Companion.